Hello everyone, this is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to our fifth class uh, for Objective-C for Absolute Beginners. Again, this is the fifth one in the series, and tonight we're going to be talking about conditional logic and looping control and how to accomplish it, uh, some of the basics for it. This uh, free series is part of, um, a, or is a subset of my courses available at excelme.com, um, which range everything from Introduction to Object-Oriented Programming and Logic to Objective-C. The next course is on Cocoa Touch, uh, followed by two iOS SDK uh, courses, an iPad course, and also a iOS game programming course, as well as our iOS marketing courses. And if you're interested, please feel free um, to visit us at excelme.com. Also, all these recordings are available. Um, these free 10-minute YouTube videos are, of course, on YouTube, but you can also get to them on my forum uh, with the appropriate class uh, from my book. Let me just bring it up here real quick. At excelme.com, you can go to the forums and the book and then for each class or each chapter has um, the YouTube video link for it. All right. As well as any Q&A, uh, programming assignments, uh, additional exercises, etc. in there. So let's get started with the time that we have on basic looping and program flow control. So we're going to make a basic object, Objective-C application by going File, New Project. And we're going to scroll down here to Application. We're not going to hang out in the iOS. That's what we do in the iOS courses. We're basically right now learning how to do Objective-C. We're going to pick a Command Line Tool Foundation. And I am using the latest version of Xcode, which just got released in gold. Um, X.3. 3.2.5, I think it says. Oops. Hold on here. No, I got this up right now, so I can't see it. But your your um, your options may vary just a little bit depending on the version of Xcode that you're using. And I'm going to make a project that is called Loop. Put it on my desktop. Hit save. Hit save. And we'll bring up our application. Go to the source, go to the .m file, and uh, your application should look like that. And let's just go through a basic, um, let's go through a basic while loop. As I type in while, we're going to get the condition, and I'm basically going to say um, while some conditions, and um, I'm going to um, uh, put a flag in here while not flag, and I am going to. Um, make a little counter here, which we've learned how to do in our other courses, our other classes. I is equal to zero, which is next to the nine, and I'll do an NS log, and we'll just go ahead and print out uh, using our our formatting controls. Uh, my percent D. that. I'm talking and programming at the same time. It's always a scary thing. There we go. And um, we'll go ahead and increment i. And I'll kind of walk you through what's happening here. And basically, if I run this application, I'll go ahead and do a build. And if everything works out just fine, I'll get a um, and of course it doesn't because I forgot a semicolon. And int i while not oh. And of course I haven't declared my uh, my flag yet. And um, we'll go flag is equal to yes. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and see what this application does, and we'll kind of go through it line by line, and then we'll add a little bit more sophistication to it here 
as well. All right, ready, ready, ready. Okay, so our application terminated. So let's look at why it terminated. So we're basically going to come into our application and we're setting i equal to zero and we're setting our flag equal to yes. Then we come in here and a loop is going to continue to process until a false condition is reached. Well, do we have a false condition? Well, we must because the application terminated. And the reason that we do is because flag was true and the not symbol basically flips that bit or um, uh, negates the, um, the true to a false or a false to a true, giving us what was going to be a true and turns it to a false so our while loop doesn't execute. The nice thing is opposed to, uh, from a while loop opposed to a, a do loop, a do while loop, is that the condition is checked before you go into the loop and that's usually the best programming form to follow. Before you go in the loop you really want to check and make sure that you're in there. And in this case, we didn't want to go into this loop because we wanted to check only, we only wanted to come in here while our flag was false. So let's go ahead and um, just do while our flag is true. Well, our flag's going to be true because we declared it to be. And we're going to do a build and run. And those of you that are on live tonight with me um, are free to ask a question anytime if you have any questions. And let's go ahead and run this application. And now our application's just running, and it's going to run. It's going to run forever because true is set. All right, um, our, our flag is set to true, and it's going to continue on. All right, so let's add some um, some logic in here. Let's just say we want to do this a hundred times before we exit the while loop. So what we can do inside of here is we're going to come in. We're going to print out our integer. And this is the same, i plus plus is the same as saying i is equal to i plus 1. Just kind of a shorthand notation. And then let's say if um, i is greater than 100, or excuse me, i is less than 100, we're going to go ahead, now let's actually make it greater. When i is greater than 100, we're going to go ahead and negate our bit, make it false, and we'll just say flag, flag is equal to no. False and no and true and yes are all defined as the same. No is zero, yes, or um, uh, true and yes is def technically defined as anything that's non-zero. Okay, if you were to do a right click and say go to definition on that, you would see that's where they defined it. All right, so let's uh, actually see if Gary can actually compile a program here without having any warning or errors in it. Um, all right, that's a positive, and let's run it. Now, ask yourself this question. What will it print out before you run it? Will it go... Um, Will it go from 0 and print out 100? Will it go to 101? Will it go to 99? Those of you that are um, online, in, in your question box, in your control panel for GoToWebinar, type in your answer. I'd like to see what you're thinking. I'm not going to call out your name if you get it wrong. Tell me what, um, what it's going to print up to, what the maximum value I will be before the application successfully terminates or unsuccessfully terminates. <laughs> All right, let me see what I got here. Okay, one said zero to 101. Anyone else? Anyone else want to take a stab at it? We'll go to, all right, one says go to 100, and one says no idea. Well, let's go ahead and run it and see what it says. Boom, goes, starts out at zero and goes to 100. Well, let's look at why. All right, so application comes in here, and its flag is going to be true. So it's going, because this now this whole thing evaluates to true, and it's going to um, 
print out what was in I, it will increment it, and then it's going to check to see if it's greater than 100. So as it gets to 99, it gets incremented to 99. Um, after it's already printed out, um, 98 goes to 99, looks to see if it's greater than 100. It's not. It then comes back up, prints out 99, prints out 100, and then terminates. Now we would get a completely different result if we did this. All right, let's see. If we move down, okay, we go to 101 here. The reason is, is because we, um, we didn't check after it was incremented. We didn't check to see where it was. So it gets to 100. It then goes ahead and increments it to 101, comes back up here, prints out 101, and then checks, sets the flag, flag is set to no, it comes up here, this is now false, and it drops out of this loop. And the loop is defined from bracket to bracket. All right. One last thing we could do is we could also move our checking, our conditions, up here to our while statement. We could say while flag is true and I is less than 100. And we could take this out all together right here. Let's run it and see if we get our expected result. Okay, we go up to 99. Why do we go to 99? Well, first of all, it does go through the loop 100 times. It's just that we have it set as zero indexed. And so when we look at our compiler output right here, we see it starts at zero, goes through 100 times. But because we look at it after it's incremented, we increment it. So it's at 99. Here it prints out 99. And then it increments it to 100 and comes up here and says, is I less than 100? Boom, it drops on out. All right. All right, well, I'm going to stop the recording right now because these videos are only 10 minutes long and that's about what YouTube gives me. So I'm gonna stop the recording and those of you that are listening live, um, of course you can register live by going to the forums. The, these, uh, these weekly videos are free and they are about 10 minutes and you can go ahead and sign up and attend free if you like by going to my forum. I'm gonna stop 